University of North Dakota. Today, I'm gonna to show you a super easy, healthy recipe, banana and oat pancakes. These pancakes are sure to keep you fueled until your next meal. And they're full of fiber, protein, healthy fats, vitamins, and minerals. Not only that, this recipe is super easy that it only takes 30 minutes. And the best part is that all you gotta do is measure out the ingredients, toss them in a blender, blend it up, and they're ready to go. So first, I'm gonna walk us through the ingredients. You're going to need two ripe bananas. Ripe bananas are usually brown and spotty, kind of like when you're making banana bread. Then you're gonna need ground cinnamon. Next, pure vanilla extract. Although sometimes vanilla extract can be expensive, so you can use um, artificial vanilla extract and it will do the exact same thing, which can help when trying to save a little bit of money. Next, we need baking powder. Then, salt. And old-fashioned oats. Now, there's a bunch of different types, types of oats. There's still cut oats, rolled oats, or sometimes called old-fashioned oats and instant oats. But for this recipe, we need rolled oats or old-fashioned oats. Then you're gonna need eggs. You're gonna need two eggs. You're gonna need some unsweetened almond milk, or you can use any type of milk you have laying around your kitchen. Some type of oil to cook the pancakes in. I'm just using this avocado butter um, as my oil, but you can use olive oil, you can use sunflower oil, canola oil, any just oil you have laying around the house. Um, don't feel the need to have to go out and buy some expensive oil. And then, the probably the most expensive, but the one I recommend the most is pure maple syrup. Now, it can be a little bit more pricey, but I do recommend it because it doesn't have all those artificial flavors and high fructose corn syrup. It's just 100% maple syrup, and it lasts a really long time in the fridge. Now, the most important step is hand washing. And hand washing is important, important for stopping the spread of germs, diseases, and for cross-contamination. So first, we're gonna start out by running some warm water. You wanna make sure to test it, make sure it's nice and warm, not too hot, not too cold. So your first, you're gonna just rinse your hands in that warm water. Then you're gonna turn off the warm water, grab some soap, and rub your hands together. Now, it's important that you make sure to get the tops of your hands in between your fingers and under your nail beds. Now, wash your hands, count for at least 20 seconds, and this will help to make sure that you're getting all those germs off your hands. Now, washing your hands is important always, but it's more important now more than ever due to the times we're in right now. And it's not only important in the kitchen, but it's also important in public. So now that we've rinsed our hands, washed our hands for 20 seconds, we're gonna turn the water back on, and we're gonna re-rinse them with warm water. And then, shut it off, grab a dry paper towel, and dry your hands. So first, we're gonna start with cracking the eggs. But before we crack the eggs, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some shopping tips. Now when you're looking for eggs, make sure to open up your carton. Now that's really important, because you wanna to check to make sure that no eggs have any cracks in them. If they do, put them back and grab a carton that doesn't have any cracked eggs. Eggs are cost-effective, super, super healthy. They have healthy fats. They have, and packed with protein. So for this recipe, it calls for two eggs. So because eggs are raw, they can, carry diseases, you wanna be sure with cross-contamination that after you're done cracking the eggs, that you wash your surface and re-wash your hands like the, wash, the hand washing steps we just did, just to make sure that we've killed any of the germs on our hands and the surfaces before we start putting other ingredients out. Crack it. Transfer it in.
crack the next one. And transfer it in. So okay, so now we're going to talk about measuring out the almond milk. So I'm going to first talk to you about the difference between liquid measuring cups and dry measuring cups. This is an example of a dry measuring cup. Now, the importance of measuring out liquid in a liquid measuring cup is that the measurements on a dry measuring cup and a liquid measuring cup may be a little bit different, so that can cause some changes in the outcome of the recipe. So when purchasing almond milk, or for this recipe I chose to do almond milk, you can use any type of plant-based milk or any milk of choice. Now for almond milk, if you're buying it in the refrigerator, make sure right when you go home, you're putting this in the refrigerator. If you buy almond milk shelf stable, that can stay on the shelf until it's open. Also, I bought unsweetened almond milk. Try to find almond milk or milk that's unsweetened so you're not getting those unnecessary added sugars. So, now let's move on to actually measuring. So, we are going to measure out the milk. And then when you look, you want to make sure it's right at the line. So, we're going to measure out a half a cup of almond milk. Just look at it at eye level. There you go. Perfect. And then all you gotta do, add it to the blender. So now we're gonna do the dry ingredients with the dry measure. So we're gonna be measuring out our old fashioned oats or rolled oats. So like I said earlier, there's many different types of oats. There's instant oats, there's old fashioned oats, and then there's steel cut oats. Now, when looking for oats, make sure to find the ones without added sugar. A lot of oatmeal tends to have some added sugar in it, so we're just trying to find the ones with no added sugar so you don't need those, again, unnecessary added sugars. Also, oats are an excellent source of healthy carbohydrates, which are loaded with fiber and protein. So now, what we're gonna do is just scoop in there, make sure it's level, and then add it. Half cup and one cup. is usually when they have some brown and spots all over them, kind of like I said for banana bread. This is what's going to make them the sweetest. So the more firm they are, the less sugars they have, and so the less tasting of sweetness they're going to have. So you want to make sure that um, they're browner, so when you do make the pancakes, they kind of act as like a sugar. So all you're going to do is you're going to peel them. And then I just kind of rip it up and toss it in. I am going to add in the baking powder, the cinnamon, and the pure vanilla extract, and the salt. We're going to grab our measuring spoons, and we're going to start out with our 1 fourth teaspoon salt. So it's important to not measure these over the blender, just in case you happen to have a mishap, you don't want to ruin the rest of the ingredients inside the blender. So you can do it over the counter, or I sometimes do it over a dry measuring cup, so you can kind of collect it and easily throw it away. So you're going to add that one fourth teaspoon salt. You're going to add that half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, the two teaspoons of baking soda, and 
a one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So now all you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in your blender, put on your lid, and then blend all the ingredients together until smooth.